Here's a little trivia. I was watching a video and they were talking about filler words. Uh is a filler word. When you say uh, you're kind of like searching for a word. Uh, filler word. And people were, use these different filler words at different times. So, like I said, uh is a filler word, and it's knowing what you need to say, but you're searching for the word. That's when, when people will go, uh, you're searching, right? Um is a little different. Um is a holding pattern. It's trying to work out the direction you want to go in that conversation. And like, people will say, they might say, oh, that you know, that lo looks like chicken or something like that. That's fine. That's a different way of using it. But when you say something, for example, I was at like the library yesterday. No, you weren't like at the, the library yesterday. You were at the library yesterday. But that's another filler word. But you could say, you know, that looks like a brick and it's a cinder block. Now that's different. Um, but we hear the word like often as a filler word in today's society. It can be annoying as fuck. You know, every generation had their own words, so, you know, don't get too tied up over it, right? Lots of folks these days can't even complete a sentence without using like. Exactly, and that's what I was talking about. And it can be annoying. It can be, like, annoying, right? If you have to say like, why not? I, I'd much rather hear a pause like if somebody were to say that, it's like oh, annoying. Why not just go, it's like annoying. You don't sound incoherent when you eliminate the word like. But I guess people don't really notice or care. And I wonder if it's the product of the dumbing down of society. You know? What do you guys think? I, I found it interesting because, you know, all of us use, you know, those, those, I just use one right there. You know, you know, is like, um, it's a, it's a, it's a holding pattern word, you know, trying to work out the direction you want to go in the conversation. Most of us use, you know, or, uh, or, um, but I think many of us try to limit how often we say those words, right? Being a psychology major, and studying psychology, I find it fascinating. You know, the words that we use, why we say what we say, why do we do what we do? This is one of the things. Allie catches me all the time. If I hear a certain idiosyncratic phrase that just, like, you can bet your bottom dollar, right? Where did that come from? Well, it came from the 1920s, 1930s, during the Great Depression, crash of the stock market, money was tight. It better be a sure bet if you can bet your bottom dollar. And that's where that came from. And that's the kind of thing I, I find interesting is expressions like that, etymologies of words that, you know, the origin of how this word came about, even people's names, the origin of people's names, right? Some of our children can't read cursive. That's true. And if they can't read it, they sure, certainly can't write it. Definitely dumbing down of the following generations, making them dependent on electronics. I agree. I agree. But a lot of people won't admit that. It's, it's not something easily admittable to. Because they don't realize they're even doing it when they're doing it. I think a lot of us will use, like I said, certain words we will use. And I do say, you know, occasionally, but I try to limit that. And I try to limit my ums and uhs. But I'm guilty of all that, too. It seems like the way they talked back, you know, in the early... I said, you know, again. Back in the early... 1900s, they had a finer control of linguistics, of, of the use of language, and it sounded more intelligent. Hey, baby. Hello. There you are. You know, when you, you say you know, that's the start of a sentence, though, so it's not actually, you know, the filler thing. 
Where does y'all fit into all of this? That's a good question. I, I never looked into that. Depends whereabouts in the sentence it is. Hi, y'all is the start of, and it's a welcome. Hi, and, you all. Um, yeah. Hi, y'all, um, or you all. So I think I, I think it's just saying you all, isn't it? So it's maybe not a filler word. It doesn't. What doesn't bother me is when people say all y'all, I, and I, I realize how redundant that is. All of you all. All y'all. I just find it, I don't know, I, I just kind of find, find it kind of silly, but it doesn't bother me the way people use that word like. I think people need to take more time to think before they speak. I totally love this, and I totally agree. It's okay to have silence in between and during a conversation while somebody's gathering the, their thoughts and figuring out what they want to say. I'm totally cool with that. But some people think that the conversation has to constantly flow. It doesn't. I, I'm with you on that. I'm glad you guys found that interesting, at least. It's a, we feel. It's about feeling each other with the energy, you know, when you pause a little bit, you know. And the other thing is when you've got somebody who talks a lot and somebody who doesn't really um you you know that everybody needs to pause a little bit because it's the art of conversation so that other people can join in um and interject with it otherwise you can't it's not a flow of of everybody nobody gets a chance mm -hmm. so you're right you're right i agree with you as well linda makes a good point how about double negatives when people say something like, I didn't do nothing. Here's the prime example of a double negative in music. And it was like a number one song on a number one album. It was by Pink Floyd. And you guys have all heard this song. We don't need no education. And all these people are singing along with it. But it's a double negative. And what it actually means is we need to be educated. It's so redundant, but people dug it and it became a... I thought it was it. We don't need no education. Do not know. So the do not is one negative. No education yeah. is another one. So they cancel each other, which really? means, we, yeah, we. that's what a double negative is. Two negatives cancel each other and it becomes, you know, you just remove the negatives from the sentence and you have what the meaning is. We don't need no education is we need education. I always, always, always had it the opposite way around. Um, <laughs> that's what I, I, I thought it was because I obviously didn't know that principle. Mm. Here's another, here's another one that uh, is, is interesting too. And for the longest time I was guilty of doing this. I would misuse the words you, me, for example, me and Tom went to the creek the other day. No, it's Tom and I went to the creek. And it's all you have to do on that situation is remove the other person. I went to the creek yesterday. And you know how to say that. And it's always the other person first, followed by you, or the other people followed by you. And I, I corrected a friend of mine, Bob Wong, who said, yeah, me and, me and Dara are going to the the movies tonight i said no it's dar darlene and i are going to the movie. he goes no because i'm more important <laughs> <laughs> i i um i'm de i definitely don't do things on the politically correct thing yeah. No. yeah and i'd hate to criticize be you know to every single thing be criticized and i know i'm i don't do that to that. you no we don't um, not at all but, no yeah but uh, yeah, this is just for conversation.